there are some number of uh, baby girls born uh, without uteruses. And uh, there are, of course, many high-tech and uh, newfangled ways of uh, helping people with uh, reduced fertility uh, get fertility. Um, of course, there, there are ancient ways of, of dealing with this. Adoption is uh, not limited to humans. Uh, it, is, it is found in other species as well. Um, but, uh, you know, everyone will be familiar with uh, interventions like IVF and such. And, um, you know, we know people who have benefited from such interventions and they, you know, they do raise uh, ethical questions, but, uh, but it's, it is not, you know, it, it has become somewhat common in some milieus uh, for it to be understood that some number of people, in part because, uh, uh, you know, upper middle class educated people are often waiting uh, a fairly long time uh, to start families, uh, that there will be assistance uh, in, in having kids. And um, being you know, utterly without a uterus uh, is, of course, a rather giant barrier. Uh, and it seems like it might be too much of a barrier. But as it turns out, there have been some... Um, <clears throat> some successful attempts to do uterine transplants in women. It's very new. It's mostly unsuccessful. It requires a lot of other systems to be wait, functional. Wait. Question. Yes. Um, a question you may not know the answer to, but mm -hmm. successful uterine transplants. Does that mean that transplanted uteruses, I don't know that that's how you pluralize that, but let's just say it is. Probably uteri, but I don't know. I would think it would be uteri, but... Um, Neither you nor I know if it's uteri. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, is there at least one case, I will be surprised if there is, in which a transplanted uterus without surgical intervention resulted in a healthy vaginal birth of a child? What do you mean by surgical intervention? Well, I will obviously be- obviously the entire thing is rather surgical. Right, but I will be less impressed uh, if, a cesarean section is necessary yeah. uh, to birth. That so, seems much more likely. Let's, um, let me read to you a bit from this um, paper called The History Behind Successful Uterine Transplantation in Humans. Okay. Published in an article called, uh, I don't know what JBRA stands for here, but Assisted Reproduction in 2017. You can show my screen here. Um, by a, a bunch of researchers in Mexico and Europe. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. From the abstract, 25 UTX, uterine transplant procedures, have been performed in humans. This is as of publication in 2017. The first two cases were unsuccessful, but established the need for rigorous research to improve success rates. As a result of a controlled clinical study under a strictly designed research protocol, nine subsequent uterine transplant procedures have resulted in six healthy live births, the first of them in 2014. Further failed uterine transplant procedures have been performed in China, Czech Republic, Brazil, Germany, and the United States, most of which used living donors, albeit still an experimental procedure. Uh, uterine transplant is the first potential alternative for the treatment of absolute, absolute uterine factor infertility, uh, which is to say just not having them mostly. Okay, so let me read just a little bit from the introduction mm -hmm. here. The clinical field of tissue transplantation now includes uterine transplants. It has its peculiarities, however. It is a transitory procedure that does not necessarily save a life in danger, which we normally think of with regard to transplants, right? But instead improves quality of life and offers women anatomically or functionally unable to bear children the possibility of becoming mothers and giving birth to healthy infants. Hysterectomy is indicated after parity mainly to avoid the risks secondary to long-term immunosuppression. That is critical. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So um, I'm shocked that this works at all and ever. Uh, there have apparently been some successes, and I, I assume it's C-section, but I don't. Rem I don't remember. I didn't look carefully. Right. Um, but it's not permanent. You don't get a uterus and then live with that uterus for your entire life. Um, the point is to be able to bring a baby to term in your own body and to avoid things like um, donors and surrogacy, which have a whole other set of um, of ethical problems associated with them, um, right? And and just 
and psychological problems. Um, but then after a successful birth, the idea is to have that uterus removed um, so that you don't have to continue to be on immunosuppressive drugs and, um, and such. And so just one more uh, thing from the, from the same, from the introduction. Um, oh, this is just the same thing. Once parity has been achieved, that is to say, once a birth has successfully happened um, from a gestation that occurred in that uterus, the uterus is su surgically removed to allow the, susp the suspension of immunosuppressants, thus minimizing long-term side effects. This is so fascinating. Yeah. Um, Can I just have my screen back? Go on. A couple things. One, very interesting tie-in with Peter Medawar. Yep. Um, because it is the rejection of even a well-matched uterus, which causes the leaving of the newly installed uterus in place uh, yep. too costly to contemplate. Yeah. Nowhere in this so far have I heard anybody... So if you put in a uterus and you have to use immunosuppressive drugs to re reduce the likelihood of graft rejection, the baby is going to live in that uterus until... In, in the body of a woman who is taking immunosuppressant drugs. Right. What is the effect of that? Right. Um, that is an obvious question. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think just to put this in proper context, this is another case where the terminology leads you to the wrong model. Just as we have vaccines that aren't vaccines. Mm -hmm. Yes, they look a lot like vaccines. They're administered like a vaccine, but actually they turn your cells into a vaccine in the case of an mRNA so-called vaccine. Here, you've got a transplant that is the temporary placement of a uterus inside of the body so that a person can experience some of the normal processes that go along with pregnancy, but that uterus is then going to be taken out after the pregnancy is over. It is the temporary placement of a uterus into um into a woman, which is not a, a transplant. I've never heard of a transplant before that's temporary. Maybe there are examples, but I would argue that that's, that actually deserves a different term. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, that's a, a temporary thing. And there is a question. I mean, look, I certainly have sympathy for a, a woman who can't give birth because of a compromised or absent uterus. On the other hand, there is a question about something, do you really, in order to have the natural experience of pregnancy rather than, for example, adopting a child, um, this is a very highly medicalized and unnatural process. It sure is. Yeah. No, and I um, I wish I knew the answer to your question, but I, I assume that it's just going to be I, Now that I've heard what yeah, I've heard, I, think, I would I, I will has to bet be. uh, dollars I, to donuts. You know, there, there are a lot of C-section babies out there, um, and and cesarean sections have, um, you know, have saved the lives of countless mothers and babies. Um, but it's not as good as vaginal birth. It's just not. Yep. Right? Um, it, it doesn't impart the same... Um, information um, largely immune uh, that vaginal birth does. Um, and that's that's just one of the things that we can see uh, that is going to be difficult here. And of course, all of this assumes that everything else about the, the woman, the mother-to-be into whom the uterus is being transplanted, is functional and that she has all of the other systems um, that, that are necessary, right? So just one more um, brief uh, thing from uh, the discussion section of this paper, 2017, on the status of uh, uterine transplants in humans. Uterine transplantation is a temporary process in which the recipient undergoes a process of adapting to a received uterus, followed by treatments to achieve pregnancy through IVF, which ultimately bring a child into the world in the shortest time possible to allow the removal of the uterus. The recipient has to go through a process that brings with it a new phase of understanding, pain over the loss and readaptation. So there's an additional, you know, much as women who have had hysterectomies um, often, and you know, I've, I've I've spoken to some, I know I know some, um, have experienced great loss, even those who felt that they were already beyond their childbearing years. You know, giving up some part of your body, especially if it is associated with um, a particular, you know, way of being that you that you know has contributed to how you are in the world um, can provide a significant um, kind of loss. And if if you have 
been able to receive an organ that you have then gestated a child in, and that child is now in the world and is going to be your child forever, and then you have to give up the organ that uh, that allowed it. That is going to that is going to take, as they say, um, a new phase of understanding, pain over the loss and readaptation, and so, you know all sorts of you know, unintended consequences as a result of this technology, right? So on the same topic, the it's very seems very unlike. I mean, humans are unique in the sense of having, or almost unique in the sense of having menopause, where you have these organs which are sidelined after some uh, stage of life. Because humans are almost unique in having this, and it's really a couple of other creatures in which they're candidates. I think elephants and orcas. Um, but the idea that this tissue remains there inert is not resorbed. Um, likely that tissue is still doing things. And the question of what its endocrinological impact is and therefore what the loss of it is and what impacts that has are significant. Now, a person who doesn't have a uterus or had to have it removed because of a pathology would be in that circumstance anyway. But one does have to ask the question. Let's say that you temporary, um, using the term, maybe I should not use the term install. You implant a uterus um, in a woman who doesn't have one. She is then presumably, uh, an egg is then implanted, a fertilized egg is implanted, an embryo uh, is implanted, the pregnancy proceeds, a cesarean section happens, the uterus is removed. My guess is that this is not going to trigger normal lactation either. That would be my guess, and that that's one. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not certain of that. Okay. Uh, I. Um, yeah. There. There's so. There's so many. Of course. Just to think endocrinologically, which is not all of it, but there's so many uh, hormonal triggers and associations with pregnancy and you know just just the things i'm thinking of at the moment other than the estrogens and progesterone but prolactin and um and oxytocin and gosh others luteinizing hormone and they just a lot of these things i don't the and i also don't know anything about what prompts birth like you know are you do uterine contractions prompt a C-section here, um, and one one of the reasons I think that C-sections aren't um, as beneficial um, to babies as vaginal birth is that um, what leads up to vaginal birth uh, is the body preparing to have a baby that needs to be fed outside of the body as opposed to inside the body, and so there is a certain you know the letdown of milk and you know all of these things that that happen are triggered from inside the body, and you know a C-section just like as also like a scheduled vaginal delivery won't tend to be um the body will not tend to be as prepared as it would be if um if the body was in charge as opposed to a doctor yeah i i agree with that and uh, so i will just i predict that this doesn't result in normal lactation there's also a question about the things like antibiotics and other compounds that will be used to make these two surgeries that are you know bookending pregnancy um, to make that work, there's a question about whether or not that stuff ends up in the breast milk, if there even is breast milk. Yeah. So again, my overall impression is I have the, I mean, I, again, lots of sympathy for women who find themselves reproductively incapable for whatever reason, but that this sounds like, yes, there are people who are so desperate to have gone through pregnancy that they will do virtually anything. And so the demand here is very high. That does not make this wise. Right. And it, this is so highly technological and medical that the idea that it is done so that you can have the natural experience of pregnancy, it's not, how, it's not how natural is that? Yeah.